Charlie. Well, thank you very much. We'll see you later on. Uh, time you. now is 13 minutes past eight. Now, adults under the age of 30 are going to be offered an alternative vaccine. This follows concerns over rare blood clots. If you're concerned, I think this next 15 minutes may help. Yes, uh, the concerns are obviously specific to AstraZeneca and the very, very small chance of there being a link between uh, the jab itself and a certain form of blood clot. Let's talk to two of our regular experts, virologist Dr Chris Smith and Professor Linda Bold. Good morning to you both. You know, one of the things um, we did, we've obviously been talking about this from all angles. We've spoken to someone from the JCVI, the Joint Committee for Vaccinations and Immunisations. We've spoken to a GP as well, who are going to be dealing with people who have concerns. And one of the first things we've asked, I suppose, is initial reaction to this news. So I just want to briefly, Chris and Linda, if you could give us your thoughts, Chris. Uh, well, actually, I'm sort of reassured, in fact, because when we see reports like this, we know our systems work. We have a really, really good and effective strategy called pharmacovigilance, where people report side effects and they get investigated and they're acted on. And this shows, but also not alarmed by the fact that we're not seeing anything that's occurring at a disproportionately high level, given the enormous benefit that these vaccines return. And Linda, your thoughts over the last 24 hours? Well, I agree with Chris. I think having identified this signal, it is a sign that the yellow card system is functioning as it should. So it's a precautionary just approach. Explain, sorry, the yellow card system for us. So I think this is really important to explain it and people are hearing more about it. So that's the MHRA's way of monitoring not just vaccines, but medicines if there are adverse events. This is a precautionary step. What I would say is that I'm hoping that it won't have an impact on the uptake of the vaccines or public confidence. A cross-national study suggests that about 86% of people in the UK will definitely come forward for a vaccine when asked, and we've seen even greater levels of uptake in older people. But over 50% of people when asked what their biggest concern might be if they had any is side effects. So it's really important that we continue to communicate about why this decision has been taken. I mean, we're talking about the under 30s in the future because that will be the mass rollout, but there are quite a lot of under 30s who have already had the first dose of AstraZeneca. Yes, more than a million are in the up to 29 year age bracket and have already had a, a dose or maybe even two doses. So therefore, if you are 21 days after your jab, then you are at very low risk of having any kind of problem. And if you've had one dose, <coughs> then the chances of it happening again in the second dose are vanishingly rare because distant headache. Because if you get a, a blockage in the in the veins, the cerebral venous sinuses in your head, then it does translate into a headache that goes five days that doesn't respond to just trivial things like paracetamol, then you should seek advice. But again, this is very, very rare. We're talking about maybe one in a million people. And For his second jab. Very good question from Trevor. So the short answer with a couple of exceptions is no. The recommendation is very clear that you should receive both doses of the same vaccine. So if Trevor's son's already had the Oxford AstraZeneca, then it's the same one the second time. Or they should receive a second vaccine, um, a different vaccine for the second dose. The other category of people who's people who are prone to having problems with blood clotting, they need to speak to their doctor. But One question here from Gary. Um, Linda, I'll ask you to take this one, but we'll put this into context as well. So what we know is that when we've had these um, cases of blood clots, two thirds of the cases of the rare clots were seen in women like me. Why can't the rollout continue for us? So an another good question from, from Gary. So the, the evidence of the link with sex is not definitive. Women are more likely to develop these clots. There are other reasons why women might be more likely to develop clots generally, but in, the, in this instance. Um, so it's the, the decision has been make it, made for both men and women, for young men and young women. So it means that that cautionary step that is being taken in the UK to offer, if available, a different vaccine to people under the age of 30 will be the same for both men and women. Sex is one of the potential explanations, it might not be about the biology, is that, for example, there are more women healthcare professionals who might already have been vaccinated. So there isn't a definitive link at the moment with, with sex. Linda, do you want to pick up this thought? This is from uh, Suzanne and Milton Keynes. In fact, Chris, I'll, I'll put this one to you. Um, this kind of harps back to the point we were making earlier, which is that by having the first dose and being fine, 
you've almost proved to yourself beyond reasonable doubt that you're fine with this vaccine. You'll be fine with the second dose. So you should go ahead and proceed to have your second dose. Your risk from coronavirus, if you catch it, especially in that age category, is far higher than any kind of risk from these vaccines. Questions when people are asking um, about taking the contraceptive pill as well. Um, and so I suppose this is one of the questions about the types of clots that we're talking about. Uh, it's very important that we distinguish between what are called deep venous thromboses or DVTs, which occur chiefly in the legs. And this very specialised form of complication, cerebral venous sinus thrombosis, CVST, which occurs chiefly in the back of the head. So venous thromboses in your legs and venous thrombosis in your head are two different things, although they may be connected in terms of, of what the consequences are what causes that to happen is different in the two cases and therefore one shouldn't say because you've got one you're going to have the other Next, isn't it it is charlie so two point sorry two, two points there i think as chris was saying before when do i need to worry so these rare very rare adverse adverse events have happened in the first few days or so after the first dose and after around two weeks after the first dose uh, the risk really returns to, to the same uh, as if, you know, you, you weren't at risk of these adverse events. So people should only be really uh, l looking and watching out for any symptoms that are unusual, particularly those that Chris has described in those first few days. But healthcare professionals and others need to continue to give accurate advice to the public. And given our uptake has been so phenomenal, I think we were hearing from Matt Hancock earlier that I, I can't remember what the figure was, 99, over 99% of people had come forward for their second dose, which is brilliant. We want that to continue. So we need to keep communicating about this and reassure people who are in that group where um, there's going to be a different vaccine that's offered, that the system is working and they should come forward when they're invited to do so. I'm going to squeeze this one in, Chris, perhaps you can have the last word. If someone has had the AstraZeneca vaccine, has heard all the news over the last 24 hours, in fact, the last week or so coming out. Most side effects and symptoms to most medicines happen when the concentration of that medicine is highest in the body. And that means closest to the time that it was administered. And as time goes on afterwards, generally, the, the rate of a reaction or the risk of a reaction falls away. Most of the most acute symptoms occurring within a week of the administration. So once you go beyond about a week, you can think, well, I'm probably not going to see any kind of side effects. And the most acute side effects tend to be the ones that we all expect with a vaccine anyway. Chills, feeling a bit run down, a bit tired, a bit coldy for 24 hours, and they then usually pass off trivially. So bottom line is, close to the time of administration is the highest risk that you're going to get some side effects. And as time goes on, you can re regard yourself as probably out of the woods for any kind of side effects. Uh, Chris Linda, I try not to say this every time, uh, but it is true. It's probably pretty much the most important thing we do when we have these little panel sessions and you ask these questions, because mm. so many people get so much from it. So oh, I'm going to say it now. Thank you very much. It works. It works. Thank you very much. See you both soon. Thank you. I've finished on a lovely positive note there. They didn't seem very impressed, frankly. They, they seem to dismiss it. I think they know that already. Don't know why Dismiss, I bothered. Dismissed you. Dismissed you. Um, why don't I... Uh, here, this will cheer you up. Um, fees on the farm. Finding out why there are some native farm animals, which you might not be so familiar with, that are at risk of extinction. And we've all... Good morning from BBC London. I'm back with the latest from BBC London in half an hour. Now, though, it's back to Charlie and Naga. Have a lovely morning. Bye-bye for now. Good morning live follows breakfast on BBC One. Let's find out what's happening with Kim and Gay. Also today, we're looking... Whom we're talking about the pan... ...being stolen in the UK. One... Parkinson knows all about footwear. Strictly's Jeanette Manrara. Look forward to that. See you then. Upper body. See you later. <laughs> Thanks You're very bouncing. much. You're bouncing. Yes, it's not... oh. I forget I'm doing it sometimes. Sorry. <laughs> it's too Thanks, easy. Thanks, guys.